Hello, welcome or welcome back to the Sapling Tarot. My name is Imogen. Today we're going to be doing the I've got a deck for that tag by feeding my soul one tea one tea. Now I often don't do these kinds of like deck prompt tags because I don't have loads of decks so sometimes, well I do have loads of decks for a normal person but I think compared with a lot of the tarot cube community I don't have a squillion decks so sometimes it can feel a little bit like I'm shoehorning decks into prompts um, but this one I came up with answers that I'm happy with for like most of the prompts um, with the exception of one which we'll get to momentarily and these tags are, are quite cute in the sense that they they tell you a little bit about me and they show off some beautiful decks so let's get into it. Okay so the first prompt, um, I rearranged the prompts into like categories uh, because that makes my brain happy um, and then so the first prompt, we're going to get it out of the way now uh, because I don't have a deck for it, is your favourite film genre. My favourite film genre is like a fluffy action movie, um, you know very low stakes, not very serious, uh, that kind of good stuff and I, I don't I don't know I just don't really have a deck that I feel really speaks to that kind of explosions and car chases kind of thing um I'm sure as soon as I upload this video it will come to me but um I don't have anything with the first one however favorite film and um I may not be a Libra but I am an air sign, I am a Gemini, and I don't do favourites. Um, you can't make me. So my answer for most of these is either for right now or favourite film, etc. that I've uh, read or watched or things recently. And the favourite film that I've watched recently was Poor Things. And for that I've chosen the Tara de Colotidas. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely. This is a Fournier deck, so it's got that really lovely Fournier cardstock. It's a really good size, they're kind of skinny. I love the backs so much. And the reason that I chose this for um, the Poor Things film is I feel like the costuming is quite similar and the colour palette. Um, so, in particularly, in particularly, in particular, the yellows and the blues. Um, so, I mean, none of <laughs> maybe none of these at the moment, but we'll get there. We'll get there in a second. Um, I feel like she wears some kind of slightly Edwardian things. Um, there is a card that's going to come up. I mean, she definitely wears something like this. Um, are we going to find a card that is something? That's a good one. But yeah, like the yellows in the pentacles suit in particular um, remind me of a lot of the costuming. And there's also like a kind of a fantasy, fantastical kind of um, element to this deck that I think speaks to the slightly fantastical um, feeling of the film. Um, so a combination of the, there's one, there's, yeah, that's another one that I was thinking of. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, an, it's a deck that feels in like a whole bunch of different ways, like the film. I'm, <laughs> You can tell I haven't recorded in a little while. I'm I'm going all over the place. So yeah, for the film, poor things, I have chosen the Tarot de Carlotides. Definitely, definitely this one. Okay, while we're on the screen, let's go from the big screen to the small screen and favourite TV show. And okay, this isn't a recent TV show, <laughs> um, but it's one that I love so much and I rewatch as regularly as I can. I don't have access to 
Netflix at the moment, so um, I haven't watched it for a while, but I miss it. And my favourite television show uh, was Sense8. So if I had the Numinous Tarot, I would choose that one because I think it's the Lover's Card that has loads of people in it, and so that would make perfect sense. But um, I don't have that one, so I chose the Queer Tarot because it was a deliciously queer show. Um, it wasn't like about them being queer, which I always enjoy. Uh, they just all happened to be queer because there was just that the kind of the mind melding thing that was happening um, meant that they all experienced all sorts of different attraction. Um, and you get eight people together, and some of that's going to be gay. So um, it was kind of a sexy show, but not. I don't know. I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought it was genius. I was absolutely gutted when they cancelled it. Um, yeah, I need to rewatch it. And so I chose the queer tarot for kind of obvious reasons. Um, got all these lovely queer folk scattered through it and also um, it kind of reminds me of the colour palette of the show like quite a lot of it was quite vibrant um, it was set all over the world so there were all sorts of different cultures um, and like yeah different different cities and different places and um, but all through quite a quite a queer lens so for my favorite tv show which was sense8 we have the queer tarot my favorite book genre i've chosen magical realism and for magical realism i have picked out the citadel which i think kind of speaks for itself it's quite a kind of dungeons and dragons role play game uh themed deck it um, is really, the world building is really amazing and that's something that I really appreciate in a story. Now you can see a bit better. Um, so yeah, the world building is really beautiful but then there's also those characters and those are the things that I, I suppose I look for in a book is yeah, a, a well fleshed out world, but preferably that doesn't take like the whole of the first book of a series to, to flesh out. Um, and the the little book that comes with this is, I don't have it here because I had this deck out because this was one of my March decks, is, you know, obviously it's tiny, it's a little book, but the world building in it and the character building for each of the cards is just really impressive. There's even stuff in the back of the book, I think, about... So I may have just got cut off. I don't know how much, how much of that was actually recording. Um, but what I was saying was I love the world that's been built in this deck and all of the characters are really well fleshed out. Um, and those are two things that I look for in a book. And uh, yeah, I like things that are well explained but quite concisely explained. I don't want it to be the whole of the first book is explaining the world and like the magical system and whatever i find that um takes maybe more effort than what i'm after from fiction uh sue me and i think that this book this book this deck really sums that up and i think it gets right to the point but it's also really rich and delicious and immersive um so yeah let's not have the assassin on top let's have the Rollager. So the final one in the kind of media category is favourite music genre or song and I took full opportunity to not have to be nailed down to a favourite song and so I chose a genre which is um, kind of retro disco gay club vibes. It is my favourite music to listen to habitually. Um, I feel like this deck, the Gentle Thrills Tarot, I mean, I could have gone for the Queer Tarot, uh, but you know, gay club vibes. But 
um i feel like the colors in particular in this deck are so punchy but also kind of night club or kind of gay club more specifically vibes there's oh how many times am i going to say vibes in this video i'm so sorry um the characters all feel quite like the kind of people who would sing in the songs that i like um so yeah this was much more of a sort of the sense i get from the deck is there's something kind of a little bit retro about it there's something quite camp about it and that's what i like um i want to listen to music like i'm in a gay club in maybe like the early 80s and yeah that's that's what i want i mean that's just kind of what i want from fashion that's what i want from culture that's what i want from a lot of things um <laughs> and so i feel like this deck sums up the kind of raucous i mean <laughs> maybe not that one um but yeah i mean like this outfit this queen of swords i i want to go dancing with her i mean i'm in a mood at the moment <laughs> i'm in the mood for dancing don't start singing um i really really miss going out dancing um covid can suck a whole bag of dicks and um i'm trying to find a way <laughs> to be able to go out dancing safely um and so i'm just living living out my fantasy through this deck and the queer tarot obviously but through this deck okay moving on to like more life stuff uh favorite pastime or hobby and i feel a little bit like i'm kind of copying sylvie at tarot magpie with this one um is like my favorite hobby is research and so for this i've chosen the ritual tarot and i feel like there are so many elements in this deck i mean you've probably seen this one um on tarot cheap before but there's so many elements that it feels like being in a museum um and like you're going through a museum catalogue and it makes me want to study it's just one, this deck makes me just want to curl up uh with a cup of tea and really get into the nitty gritty of all the details and like where everything is from and just to really feel my way through and research and study and learn and i know that it's a ridiculous thing for loads of people to say that researching is a hobby particularly if you have to do that kind of thing for work or if you're in education or whatever it probably sounds absolutely bizarre um but i you know I'm a tarot nerd i'm a nerd witch um i love learning things um in my own time at my own pace <laughs> and this deck for me i mean loads of the decks that i have i get because they feel like opportunities to learn something new um i think i've mentioned before that generally now when i'm buying tarot decks i try to get something that i feel like really adds something to my practice and kind of gives me a whole other thing to learn about to layer on top of my existing tarot knowledge um and this deck absolutely fits that brief um I could have also had the Terra Volatile for this because ooh, there's like a whole other suit and like alchemy to learn about. Um, but yeah, all of the the pieces of the collage in this deck just feels delicious. Uh, so yeah, favorite pastime research, and uh, the deck for that is the Ritual Tarot okay food right so i cannot be made to choose a favorite food um when i was a child i used to ask my mum about what her favorite things were and her response would always be well it depends on what mood i'm in and that was the most unsatisfying answer 
ever and I've absolutely turned into my mother I think that that is just being an adult is knowing that things have their time and their place um so I couldn't pick a favorite food and I couldn't pick a um a deck to go with a more like distinct food um I did see that the creator of the numinous tarot which I've already mentioned um is bringing out a food deck the tarot pantry or whatever it is and that looks hilarious um I don't think I'll get it because I disagree with some of them and I feel very strongly about food so I feel like if I was turning over cards and going no <laughs> I disagree then that does kind of break the spell a little bit so anyway that was a tangent um I mean I still haven't bought the freaking numinous tarot um so what I've chosen is um and I hope you understand what I mean by this I've chosen picky bits or like a picky tea a picnic tea uh um I'm running out of words um so when you have like a selection of things um oh man so I've chosen the um the teeny tiny tarot I don't use it very often so it's still um in order from the last time I looked at it um so yeah picky tea picky bits um so things like deli snacks like a bit of maybe um, pasta salad, maybe some sausage rolls or falafel or um, really nice bread and butter and like maybe cold meats and cheeses. Um, I don't really know how to explain it other than picky bits or picky tea because I know what that means and everyone that I know would know what that means but I don't know if that translates or if other people eat like that. Or if that's just so normal for other people to call it something sounds ridiculous um i have issues it's quite strange i have issues with small plates because as a like as a food delivery mechanism genre oh i don't know um and that is because i generally whenever i've gone to something like a tapas restaurant or whatever i I've been skint and I've not really had enough money to buy enough food to fill me up and that always feels like a bit of a tragedy to bother to go out for dinner and leave still hungry. <laughs> I know I just sound like an old man but um, truthfully if I've like bothered to go out and eat food then it won't like pay for food then yeah I want to be full but at home to have like a spread of weird and wonderful little things just to kind of graze on and chat with people and maybe drink some wine or something and just sort of have that like slow eating thing it does create like often quite a lot of washing up which is a bit of a pain but um i think it's worth it and so for the picky bits I chose the teeny tiny tarot because it's teeny and tiny and it's small and it's kind of simple um but it you know it packs a punch you can read it really clearly or I think so anyway um and yeah I I feel like this is self-explanatory but I also don't know if I've explained myself very well okay so to go with my picky tea, picky bits, etc. Um, I need to choose a favourite beverage and if you know me then the kind of the obvious answer is tea. One of my first videos that I uploaded on this channel was um, a VR to the coffee house decks tag but I made it the tea house decks tag and kind of changed some of the prompts uh, so I have a whole video about the teas I like. <laughs> and how they related to decks I had in my collection at that point. So we can't talk about tea, but what I'm going to talk about is a genre of drink because we've talked about, you know, film genres and book genres and musical genres, and I'm just going to refer to it as summary drinks. Uh, Sylvie at Tarot Magpie mentioned margaritas 
and I'm going to steal that and adapt it slightly and say frozen margaritas, but also iced tea and uh, specifically peach beer, but basically drinking something really cold in the sun. <laughs> like it's a whole experience. And for that experience, I've chosen the magic tarot, mostly because of this yellow. <laughs> and this just feels like okay none of these are giving me sunshine okay sunshine drinking out of those drinks cups in the sunshine yes flamingos i want fruity icy cocktail <laughs> and yeah this just feels like there we go absolutely three of cups drinking those drinks with friends in the sunshine peach beer frozen margarita iced tea really really cold wine um, a beer with like condensation running down the outside of the glass that is the best drink in the world I think any of those alcoholic non-alcoholic I don't care I, I just it's the experience of drinking it probably with people uh, in the sunshine that uh, is my favorite and my best Okay, so the next one is Holiday Destination. This is somewhere that I've been, somewhere to which I would like to go back. Um, and it is Venice. And um, I think this was actually in the original, like the origin of this tag. I think their prompt was, not prompt, answer, what was Venice? And I chose a Terra Volatile because this reminds me of the kind of art um, I think it might be from Italy I could also be entirely wrong um, but yeah it, it reminds me of the kind of art that I have seen in Venice it reminds me of the architecture particularly like this creamy buff kind of colour um, reminds me of like the the colors of the like plaster and frescoes and stuff it yeah it makes me makes me think of that um yeah i mean i don't really don't really know what else to say because this one was such an immediate like oh yeah that one definitely um i love venice so much it's my favorite place i've ever been um I felt so at home there which is really weird because obviously it's like tourist central and they don't necessarily love that it's tourist central um but yeah I just felt really at home there and I would go back in an absolute heartbeat I love this deck so much and um, so many of my decks have been in order because I'm such a nerd and I spend probably more time studying them than I do reading with them I probably shouldn't admit that on tarot tube should I? Um, anyway. Okay so my favourite scents, uh, fragrances, I'm a perfume nerd, I want to make videos about that, uh, we'll get there eventually, but for now my favourite fragrances, I mean scents is obviously so much broader than perfume, um, and there are a million smells that I probably love more than perfume it's like beeswax or you know the smell of my brother's head when he was a baby or um you know kitten fur or any of those sorts of things but if i'm limiting myself to perfumes my general area that i gravitate towards is like woody woody smoky and these are some of my favorites so this one is called forest lungs and um i've already been through like a little mini travel one of it um if you meet me and i smell of something this is probably what i smell like it's very like cedar woods mostly um but then also a mention of this one in particular from brooks perfumes which is undergrowth which is like wet leaves minty wet soil 
crashed underfoot and then also forest from them and then all 160 Tuesdays do one called a walk in the forest which is more autumn leaves a bit drier <laughs> a bit less rain for not rainforest but like a forest in the rain or a wood in the rain um you know i'm british i have to like the smell of rain otherwise truly how would we manage um oh that's another smell though petrichor what an absolute oh the best thing um and that kind of like minerality that you get in the air anyway i could talk about perfume forever let's not the deck i chose to go with that prompt is the thistledown oracle um which i think is probably quite obvious why um because i think this is probably what that woodland smells like um i'll see if i can find a card that is the smell i think this one probably um Hmm. Well, now that I've said it, I might not be able to find it. This one, this one definitely. I mean, probably like a little bit that one, or this one. Um, but yeah, just kind of like a damp woodland is <laughs> is the smell. It's what I want to smell like. It's what I want to smell all the time. I suppose maybe this is a little bit more autumnal than I remembered. Um, oops, I did. Sorry. Um. Maybe I should have chosen Woodland Wardens instead because that's kind of got the green, but there we go, we've got some rain. Oh, I love this one so much. I think this is my favourite card in the whole deck. I mean, I think this is the card that made me buy it. I love, I love that so much. Um, but yeah, like the smell of rain in the forest is my favourite smell. And even if it doesn't actually show that all that much in this deck, apparently, um yeah like that um it the deck feels like that's what it would smell like okay so favorite flower um that's a really hard one to choose particularly in spring because all of the flowers that are out now um are favorites so um i it's a cop out and i'm choosing the herb crafters tarot <laughs> um because i'm choosing my favorite flower is um useful ones like flowering herbs um so i have been studying herbalism for a couple of years now i love it i do very kind of like low energy gardening and herbalism and stuff i'm very fortunate to live with someone who can look after our garden when i can't um and this is my favorite um yeah so flowering herbs flowers you can eat big fan this deck is not entirely things that um i can grow or things that grow native where i live um but it's still really beautiful and there's a lot of things that i am familiar with so it's yeah it's really really lovely i love flowers that are form and function beauty and useful um yeah and assertions there's some edible flowers very cool um so yeah i feel like that's a an obvious an obvious pick perhaps or a bit of a kind of like cop out easy pick but um you know you work with what you've got and what i've got is a shit ton of herbal decks okay then i want color and this one uh, was very simple because i had to just do like uh thinking quickly because otherwise I would get bogged down in the details and so I chose the Kantiji Oracle because this colour, <laughs> this colour, this kind of sagey green has been a colour that I've been really gravitating towards um, over the past couple of years. I um, really, on my notes, there you go, that's the tablet cover. 
Um, so yeah, I just had to kind of like try and not think about it too much because I like all of the colours. Um, but to show you the deck, again, this is in order because I've been uh, plotting it out on my calendar because it runs from the winter solstice all the way through the year. Um, so yeah, I've been been working through it every week. Well, yeah, as much as I can. Um, I love the kind of watercolory thing that's going on and uh yeah so that's a very root one answer and it's the kantiji oracle did i say that um so i think this is hilarious yeah cool so yeah favorite color is sagey green let's say <laughs> one of many i also love this color but um let's not start listing all the colors we like imogen that will be a very very long video. The final section of prompts is the ones that are to do with like yourself, so not like your favourite whatever, but um, more to do with who you are and who you've been. Um, so the first one is uh, the decade you were born in, a deck to represent that decade. And so I've gone for a deck that was um, released I think the year after I was born, um, and that is the Yoshi Zen. This is with my first tarot deck, um, I have a mini one that I've trimmed um, because some of the keywords are a bit, a bit iffy, but um, I love this deck. I think it's very of its time. Um, I think oh God, I've been so out of frame all video. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, I, I think it's it's great and it's you know very of its time, kind of nineties spiritualism, um, slightly culty, but we needn't, we needn't get into that. Um, so yeah, that's my, my deck from the, fuck me, I don't think I even said, it's from the 90s, 1996, I think this deck came out. Um, so yeah, this is my 90s deck. I'm all over the place, I'm so sorry. Okay, so for my child self, I have the Herd Witch Botanical Oracle because this is the closest thing I have. Oh, I'll just, that doesn't really show you anything. Um, this is the closest thing I have to a Flower Fairies deck, and I was a Flower Fairies child. Um, coming back to sort of like witchcraft and this kind of stuff has been very full circle for me, um, particularly the herbalism kind of green white, green bit green witch side of things makes a lot of sense. Um, this was I think the first oracle deck I ever got because this made me kind of understand why that could be useful um, and a lot of these are things that grow near me and around me. Um, so yeah, child me is the hedge witch botanical oracle. And then teen me, um, I want to show you a picture of my, my like ultimate in a teen work spread that I did recently um, because it was just like hellfire and brimstone, 100%. Um, and I'll talk more about that in my what's been floating my boat video that's coming up soon, uh, revisiting an old format from previous YouTube days. Um, but all of that is to say, the deck I've chosen for my inner teen is the Outwear Yourself because she's a little angsty baby. Um, this is like the deck that I needed as a teenager, I think. Um, but maybe I wouldn't have listened to it then. Um, so in the inner teenage, inner teenager spread I did. Um, I used this and the Yoshi Zen because that was a deck that I had when I was a teenager and then also the magical guidance cards from Anna, Astro Anna at Astral Lady Tarot um, and yeah I just they're all the kind of things that I wanted and needed at that point um, I don't know maybe I shouldn't maybe I wouldn't have loved this but this is what <laughs> this is what my the inside of my head looked like when I was 
when I was a teenager. It was not a great time. Um, yeah, no, I think, I think I could have done with this. Um, so yeah, so for my inner teen, it is the Outgrow Yourself Tarot and Oracle. And then the final prompt was the most difficult because it's for your adult self, presumably, <laughs> who you are now. Um, and I suppose my, my whole tarot collection really is me and like my many facets and whatnot. Um, and so I picked a favourite deck and the one that I feel really seen and like held by, but also something that I've been like working on um through most of my adult life which is this like this idea of spaciousness and filling myself out to my edges and kind of expansive broadening of horizons um yeah world that's nice um and so it's a spacious tarot and i love this deck I find it really soothing but also like kind of a good kick up the ass uh, when I need it. Um, it walks that line between yeah kind of light and dark, sunlight and shade, um, <laughs> like I planned it. Um, but yeah so it's it's just a deck that I feel like is everything I am and also everything that I want to be. Um, and I love it. So yeah, that's you know, a lot of these haven't been super <laughs> deeply thought through. Um, some of them are a bit kind of tangential, some of them are a bit route one. Um, oh this has the um the expansion pack next to it, which is why there's like other kind of random keywords. And um astrological stuff so yeah this is this is me i think in a deck maybe what do people call them like soul decks and stuff i think it's probably one of them but i mean all of the ones that all the decks i have that stay in my collection they're all bits of me in one form or another um but yeah now i'm just looking at the artwork uh cool so that was my I have a deck for that answers. If you make videos, I tag you. If you don't make videos, I tag you to tell me your responses in the comments. And um, if you choose to do them, pick the prompts you like. You don't have to do all of them. And this is 15 decks. Uh, I'm sure most normal people don't have. 15 decks, let alone 15 that match up with their favourite things. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're taking really good care of yourself and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!